Welcome to another edition of the SOS Show. I'm outside the medical center on the campus of the VA in Westwood, California. And uh, today we're gonna, I'm going to interview Dwayne Nettlesby, who was Tupac's producer. And he's, uh, he and I are going to try to establish a center here on the property to train uh, veterans on movie, TV, uh, and radio production. And we'll have a little studio here, uh, ideally, and uh, do some nice things for the veterans. So I'll be talking to Duane, and later on today I'll be going over to John Paul DeGioria's office in uh, Century City, have a little chat with him. And I'm also going to be talking to Ted Hayes, who is a um, not a veteran, but he uh, ran a community down in uh, downtown Los Angeles. It was um, a dome home uh, community for the homeless veterans and have you. And uh, he's a great guy. You'll love <laughs> hearing from him. So we're going to have a good show. So t- stay tuned. We're going to have some fun today. Hey, everybody. Uh, we've got Dwayne Nettlesby. A beautiful outfit there. They're not going to hit you with that thing on, right? <laughs> now, Dwayne is a, you said Army? Army. Army man. Army vet. And uh, where, where did you serve? Tell us about your, your service. Uh, I served in the, in the 80s. It was a peacetime. Uh, so I didn't really do much, but uh, I, 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 until I re enlisted. I re enlisted as a counter, a 31, a 35 Lima counterintelligence agent. That was kind of interesting. Speak up just a little bit. So that, that, that was kind of interesting, but um, <clears throat> I kind of went AWOL for that to, to do music. <laughs> <laughs> That's a scary job. I'll bet. Yeah. I, where at? Where, where were you um, stationed? I was stationed in El Paso, Texas. Texas? Yeah, at Fort Bliss. And uh, my first tour of duty, uh, when, when, when I really did the whole tour of duty, was uh, uh, as a 31 mic channel communication system operator for the Patriot Missile Systems. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, which is, uh, Patriot Missile Systems was uh, the, uh, the, uh, the air defense artillery system that really worked. Uh, it actually uh, worked so good that uh, I think Israel took it, modified it, and made their own arrow system air defense artillery system. They reverse they, engineered it? Basically, is that what you're saying? No, I mean, I think they were using Patriots at first, but then they tried to, because of their particular situations, you know, missiles flying lower, mm-hmm. they, they modified it somewhat and, 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 and made it an aero system for them, but it, it, it helps them from uh, missiles coming. It, it, the Patriot system, uh, missile system really works. Okay. Really works. And, and it's easy and quick to set up. So uh, it was fun being in on the on the uh, start of that, and then it's fun even after I left the army to watch and see how the Patriot system developed and became one of the most popular defense systems in the world. Yeah. So, I, so then you got out of it and you got into music. <laughs> Tell us what that was. Well, how well, was that transition? Well, the, <clears throat> well. The strange part about it is, is, is I actually, it was, it was kind of an accident. I had, uh, I had re-enlisted as, like I said, a 35 leader, counterintelligence agent. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, basically they told me that I wouldn't have to wear a uniform, that I could get no tattoos, and that I'd have a license to kill. And I thought, it sounds like some James Bond stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, I mean, I, I and and and, and uh, it was um, to me it was a great honor because I, you know what I, mean? I was like, y'all, y'all really think I have what it takes to do that kind of job? Right. Uh, and and so they did. So I, uh, but it scared me just talking to uh, some of the people who actually did that job and. and and they kind of like um, said, well, you know, we'll give you some, some OJT, some on-the-job training, while you're still in your first tour of duty to prepare you for this. Right. And uh, it's, it's a scary job. Uh, my hat's off to the, to the uh, counterintelligence agents out there in the field with no uniforms. Protect. 
protecting the protectors. <laughs> I came here to say goodbye to my brother because I thought that job would uh, would kill me. Mm -hmm. I didn't care. I got divorced. I didn't want to live anyway. Was <laughs> and I'm just kind of say, well, if you're really feeling suicidal, we got a job for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and really, they literally, they literally kind of, I don't know if it's true or not, but they basically told me that most special forces or special operations uh, uh, people have received Dear John letters and mm. hearts broken and they're suicidal so sure. they're giving the suicidal missions but it's not really that it's exactly what it affected it still has on me today it's it's that reason for somebody who's feeling suicidal to live something to live for you'll be an elite soldier you'll be an mm -hmm. agent you'll be you know right I'm still proud of it to this day <coughs> Even though right. I went AWOL. I was, AWOL, you know, huh? I, well, I, I came here to visit my brother, but it was really just to say, bro, I, I don't know what I volunteered for. But it sounded like some James Bond stuff, and now I'm like, I'm with it, you know, I don't care, but yeah. this is this is no uniform. <laughs> okay, so tell us about the music now. So, so, so my brother was out here doing music uh, uh, when I came here. And yeah. he and he basically said, you know, dude, you, you're good at music, man. Don't go get yourself killed doing this, that, and the other. But I just, I don't know. I, I really enjoy being a soldier. I enjoy being in the army. Enjoy. Okay, but uh, so Every you got into music, yeah, and, and and so, and, 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 but I got in an automobile accident and couldn't go back because I was injured. And okay. Said, yeah, and so I just started doing music with my brother. Right. And, and it basically, I really didn't start doing the music. I really started just being his personal assistant. Uh, You're not talking about Tupac was your brother, was he? No, no, no. My oh, brother, oh, okay. My, my brother was... Because you were John. a producer for Tupac, I was told. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <coughs> uh, but, but see, the, the way it happened was uh, uh, my brother was working with an a and person at, at A&M Records. Okay. And that a and person... And, John McClain and another a and person at A&M Records, Jimmy Iovine, kind of went to Interscope Pictures, which is an independent film company, had one movie out called Henry Rocks the Cradle, and asked them could they run the record division of their movie company. Right. And that's where Interscope Records started. Okay. Started. And my brother was the first act, his group, Truth Incorporated, was the first act signed there. Okay. So I went over to Interscope kind of like, in, you know, knowing all the head A and R, all the head people, and everything, and the first act and everything. Uh, but what happened is, and, and you kind of, you know, if you look, if you look at, at Jimmy Ivey, my brother, uh, uh, John McClain, these are all music, R and B, rock legends, uh, you know, people like that. The, the 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 taste for hip hop wasn't necessarily there with them. Okay. So, uh, uh, I like hip hop, even though I'm, I can play piano and, and, and I mostly uh, started out doing R&B, I like hip hop. So, uh, the, 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 the first act that really hit for Interscope Records was called Gerardo, had a song called Rico Suave. And so they just kind of put me in the studio with Gerardo and, and you know, just kind of say, you know, Whatever you know, you like to rap stuff. You know what's going on. Right. So uh, that kind of carried over to Tupac. Um, was he a nice guy? Tupac, Tupac was a real nice guy, which was just which is sad because the the the, the image of him and the actual person are, are almost complete opposites. You know, mm -hmm. and he, uh, in my opinion, lost his life trying to live up to the image instead of just being himself. Okay. You know, I used to tell him, we're Hootie and the Blowfish, man. <laughs> we live in Hollywood. So he was right, right on top there for a long time. Huh? He was making a lot of money and doing well. And what? Did he ever do well? He signed a really bad pretty, contract. Pretty that was famous. That, that was, that, that, that's what his problem was. <clears throat> just like NWA, he kind of took what the record company gave him and just signed it without really getting it negotiated. It seemed. And okay. so it was a really bad contract. So you still love music, though? Who, me? Yeah. Oh, of course. So now we should get some music going here. 
we, you said you talked to Guitar Center. They were willing to put up some some, some instruments. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. If we can get some property here, we maybe do a little studio, a little talk show, a little radio show, train some veterans. What do you think about that? Is that the way to go? Uh, think that uh, might work here? Uh, oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's already been in the works. Uh, there, there's a building, uh, Building 208. Mm -hmm. I live in Building 209. So okay. right next door. Oh, that works. Uh, uh, there's a lady who's in charge of arts and crafts here at the Veterans Administration who I've talked to about cutting an album of veterans like once a year oh, okay. where there are a lot of veterans who are musicians. Sure. And uh, Well, I want to train them. I want to teach them how to ride a camera, lighting, you know, all that good stuff, you know. And we can get, you know, SIR through our buddy Bruce. We got the Guitar Center. We get a couple corporate sponsors, put some veterans at work, get you working back in the music. What do you think? Oh, yeah. That's what it was all about for me. Just, just to, just, just to. Uh, I kind of figured that uh, um, getting distribution would be no problem because any major record label would love to distribute an album by veterans. Yeah. Getting a lot of people to like. I mean, people like Gary Sinise did that thing here today. People like Jim Belushi do several. A lot of people in the entertainment industry do stuff for veterans anyway. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Just as like providing food or providing concerts and stuff. This is just taking that to another level. Okay. Well, Dwayne and I, are, that's our goal. This is our first meeting on the VA. We're going to look at some properties. We're going to talk to some people. We're going to, uh, and if you are interested in helping vets by donating some money or some instruments or some advice or getting involved, um, reach out to us, Monty at ilovesos.org. And uh, let's see how it goes. Thank you, Dwayne, for you know, for your time and uh, stories. Have it. Editing with Final Cut Pro. Editing with Sony Vegas. Editing with Adobe Premiere. Uh, editing uh, like Slash Guns and Roses uh, 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 electronic press kit. Offers to edit movies. Offers to work with Disney because I didn't know Avid is what Disney should cut in. Uh, uh, connections with advertisers like Guitar Center and and and, and just because it was a community-based thing, you know what I mean. So as far as what what you're what what you're doing, I have some experience in that. As far as putting together shows, putting together videos, editing, shooting, you know what I mean. So that's when when you said all that, I said. Oh man, that's perfect. We could, I already did a network. Right, you know right, what I mean? right. Well, let's and let's try to relaunch that edit. here. Yeah. A, but, it's, but, it's, but I like what you're doing. Oh. I just want to take the skills I have, oh, okay, and apply them to what you're doing. Okay, you dig what I'm saying? Okay, cool. So this is where I live, Building 209. It's the first veterans apartment building where you, you know, you can invite your family, your girl can stay with you. Everything is really just vast apartments. And right next door, 208, in, in right here in this building, and actually that first floor right there, a little bit further back, is where the proposed recording studio for the Veterans album is going to be in. So cross your fingers. Let's make it happen. Get you back in the music business, buddy. All right? For sure, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm at John Paul Mitchell Systems, and we're going to go in and talk to JP and ha eat a little caviar and see how... Life is um, treating him. I hope, I hope it's well. See, Paul Mitchell, beautiful place. Beautiful, beautiful little Gorgeous. office. Gorgeous. Up on the tw uh, 16th floor in Thank Century you. City. Well, welcome back to the show. Um, we got my good friend John Paul DeGioria here. Hi, guys. In his gorgeous so offer, in, in uh, his office in Century City, mm -hmm. which is just uh, some fantastic. Look at this. Look at this saddle. We have a little bar here. We've got a little bar. And a saddle. A little saddle. So, I mean, we're prepared for everything. We're prepared we're, for we're everything. We're having fun. And I hope everybody out there is feeling good. I'm a veteran. And by God, I know that when we're in the military together, they show us how to take ordinary people like ourselves and by working together as a team, we achieve extraordinary results, and that's what we're trying to do, aren't we? Peace, love, and happiness to you. And this is a real fun thing to do. These little, take, these little movies. Take this advice. He's got. What advice do you have for someone coming out? Obviously, I know you. You like to share things, and you like to work hard, and all the work ethics. But someone just coming out, maybe they're a little down. What, what do you suggest that they, that they do? Well, it's very simple. When you're totally down, the only way you can look is up. When you get really down, I've been down sometimes with like an ant's walking over me. That's how down I feel. But when you're that low, all you do is look up. Now, when you're that low, you look at, well, why did I get this way? All the reasons. 
You cannot change yesterday's newspaper. So look at where you're at today and what your next step is and just think about that. You'd be amazed at how quicker life goes by in a good direction for you. One step at a time. One step at a time. Baby steps. Baby steps. The journey of a thousand miles begins with but a single step. You got step. it, Monty. You got it. All right, guys. We were both homeless, by the way. Here, here. And uh, we're not homeless anymore. <laughs> America still works. Everybody, right take there. that advice. He's the man. God bless America. Well, while I was at JP's office, I forgot to mention to the crowd that he is supplying the phones that will be used for the SOS show. We're going to give a free phone to any veteran that can produce a 30 minute show. We're going to show them how to film it, how to edit it with the free software that's on phones. His phone is called the Rocket Phone. It's coming out, and it's got 400 G speed. It's an incredible phone. So um, I wanted to thank him on camera for supplying the phones, but uh, we'll do it at a later time. He's a great guy, and I'm glad he's on board. Uh, and I'm glad uh, CitySTV.com is on board with the free 30-minute uh, show uh, on your local TV stations over Roku, Amazon, and Apple. And uh, it's all good. Talk to you soon. Hello America, do you have a product or a service? Would you like to increase your business, earn customer loyalty, spread patriotism, and thank our veterans for the service to our country? You can do all that by joining Supporting Our Servicemen, a 501c3 dedicated to helping and thanking our veterans. Please join today at ilovesos.org. Hi, welcome back to the SOS show. I'm sitting with Mr. Ted Hayes. Ted has got a beautiful plan to not only help the homeless, but future uh, societies, basically, and in, in with his structure. It's a dome structure. Tell us a little bit about the dome structure. The dome structure is a temporary um, housing uh, construct. Um, got the idea from Buckminster Fuller in one of his... Uh, Disciples, Craig Chamber, who is a Vietnam veteran, combat oh. veteran, by the way. Okay. okay. So he, he invented the dome concept, right. all of the dome concept. Okay. And we want to use those temporary structures in communities and vacant lots and are, as, a, as a tool to move and transition homeless men and women, veterans, into a future township that will be created specifically for the decentralization of our centers. And you did this already uh, downtown. Well, we put the first stage together. We demonstrated that it could be done, and the Dome Bridge was basically an abbreviation of a future township. Right. We had we had we had every racial group as possible there. We had married people. We had single people. We had single men and women there. We had pets. We had gay, straight. We had every religion. It, we, we were all there. And how and long did this? Had, how and long did it Thirteen years. Thirteen years. And people came, and, you know, came and went and so forth and. And um, it, we didn't mean for it to be there for 13 years. Right, right. It's supposed to be there for a year or two. Okay. Because we don't want to be permanent that long in anyone's right. neighborhood. We, we, right. we respect NIMBY, not right. in my backyard. Because right. nobody wants a permanent homeless facility in their backyard. Right. But if what happened was we got caught into a political morass. And we, as we kind of got on the beach but couldn't, couldn't get off the beachhead and invade, so to speak. So okay. we stuck there for 13 years. Uh -huh. not, and it's over. But, 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 but HUD. But you proved concept. We proved it. And yeah. HUD owns it. HUD owns it because the federal government paid for it. It's on the HUD's shelf right now. We're trying to get, we're trying to, get to the president right. and get to, 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 to uh, Dr. Carson right. to get them to realize, look, L.A. is trying to put some whole new things together, trailers. The federal government already has an answer to chronic street homelessness. It's just someone needs to get it off the freaking shelf. And you've been to the White House a few times to yeah. tell me your plans. Yes, yes we have. Uh, I think Especially with the Bill Clinton White House. We went there four times. Four times to the Clintons. Yeah, and, 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 and Mr. Clinton knew about the Dome Village, knew about me, about our plan, but he chose for politics not to go that way. Politics. That's okay because everything seems to be coming down to this particular president who has made all kind of platitudinal statements about veterans and yeah, the whole Trump is supposedly and, and black people. He said black people particularly talked about us. Okay. He really talked about us. He okay. said black people, I know what happened to you. He said black people, really congrats hurts you more than anybody else. He said black people, um, I want to help you. What the hell you got to lose? And right. I said, okay, dude, you said it. Let's go. They yeah, call him on his word now. Call him on his word. And but see, right. not only on his word, but we have the same as we have had Mr. Clinton and Mr. Bush, Bush and 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 um, Obama. 
he has constitutional duties written out that most people don't know about. It's called the Civil Rights Act of 1866, which is the progenitor of the 14th Amendment. And there are 10 sections in that uh, act. Three of those sections speak specifically to the President of the United States. He has to do it or be, in, or be arrested or impeached. And we have so case someone law. has to bring that attention to him. Yes, but no one's bringing it to Anybody him. Anybody out there know Trump? We need to get him to <laughs> call us, and Ted will tell him what's going on. Yeah, we need well, to get Ted in the White House and talk to, talk to Mr. Trump. That's what has got to happen. And I think once the man hears this, he'll go, huh, oh, that makes sense. See, I don't want to say too much, because remember, this guy doesn't want anybody to figure it out. He wants to be the guy that figures it out. Right. He's a building contractor. Right. We're talking about building cities globally, right, chartered right. to decentralize the human race. We've got too many people piled on top of each other. That's what we're insane. Right. Because we're piled on top of each other. It's crowded. And then the homes are pushed out. That's the reason why the homes don't want to go back in. Because they're like slaves that wandered off the plantation, tasted freedom. <laughs> they're not going to go back to that. Right, right. That's why you can't get them off the streets. They're spoiled forever. Yeah. And the only way to get them off, which I fear, is there's going to come one day, people are going to get really sick and tired of it, there's a threat of contagion breakout, and they're going to say, we're going to put together some draconian measures, round them up, put them on military bases, and make them work. Mm. And that'll be the end of our country. Wow. I fear that. Right. I'm concerned. Um, That's yeah. why we need to get to the president to cut this off. We need to get to Trump. Who out there knows uh, uh, Trump? We need to get to him. Right? That's right. You're, you're ready to fly there tomorrow. You can talk to him. Well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go tomorrow. No, no, I'm gonna go tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. I, I will go. Next maybe, I wouldn't go next week. But what <laughs> I would do is, we would talk to his staff on the phone right. first. Sure. We'll set a time, and then you, Wayne, everybody that I know that we've been talking to about this, will come together and form a delegation. That group will go there with a basic blueprint for him to work with. Say, Mr. President, you're going to be greater than the pharaohs because you're going to. Build cities for humanity. Humanity is your treasure. New Frontier 2, Operation Humanity, the new frontier is us. In these new cities, they're going to be recyclable. All kinds of stuff. Uh, a green, uh, uh, off-grid. Yeah, we went, went by Google and all the techies and corporations. We're talking about new 21st century technologies. This is our opportunity we have the communication skills. We just need to bring it all together. When John Kennedy said go to the moon, he didn't have a clue how to get there. But he, he knew there were the people in this country. You have to have a goal the mind. First. You had to have the goal, but the goal has to come from the top man in the country. And he inspired the nation. And we did it within 10 years, as he requested. Yeah. We can do just this. Just takes now. money. Well, right? Before the money, it takes, first of all. Yeah, first the plan. I mean, uh, the, the thought, the dream, the goal. And we need a president who said, he said, he told the American people, I want from you big ideas and bigger dreams. You can't get too much bigger. Ted, this Ted Hayes has the idea, guys. We have the idea because it's resident in all of us. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. my New World Community. Um, yeah. If you go to ilovesos.org, look up New World Community, we could do it with the container homes that I manufacture or the dome homes that um, Ted, Ted has access uh, and to. And all kinds or, of other or homes. Or modular structures. homes or we anything. Have no idea. It's just, yeah. there, there needs to be a new plan. Yes. But, um, we explain it this way. We were talking earlier, we explained it this way. What, there's a, I would say 95% of all the outreach to the homeless people and veterans are good. They're good and successful. The problem is there's no attachment. Everybody's like Christmas ornaments laying on the ground and they're pretty, they're nice, but nothing is what we need is a Christmas tree. What we're providing is the Christmas tree upon which the ornaments can hang. As simple as that. Everyone is welcome to participate. And political right, political left, Republican, Democrat, religious non-believers, it doesn't matter. This is about humanity. You heard it from Ted Hayes directly. <laughs> Thank you for listening, and we'll have more. I am an inspiring patriot. I love my country. My father fought in World War II in Korea and got wounded, killed by the people, suffered for it. I, I understand. I support my troops. I support veterans. However, I'm concerned about our future. I'm concerned that we're doing what's happening 100 years ago, prior to World War I, when nations were rattled, what do you call it, saber rattling and threatening, and, and manufacturers were making military equipment, and we were marching and having parades. 
Now, that led to World War I. Now, I support the president and his parade. He wants to do that, that's great, no problem. However, I think that... What, he had a parade to state the date he wanted okay, to do I'm it? I'm sorry. Uh, president, Trump was, president Trump called for a military parade based on what happened with the uh, French parade in Bastille Day um, for July 4th of this year, but apparently Pentagon said we just not enough time to organize, so they're going to move it to Armistice uh, Day, which is November the 11th, 2018. Now, that happened to be 100 years since the end of World War I. 100 years. Here we are, 18, 100 years. Now, just like then, they were parading, and carrying on, building up weaponry in the name of peace. Um, it ended up into World War I, the greatest conflict of the world at that time. And I'm saying, I'm sensing that we need to not protest the military of any military, Russian, North Korean, American, Chinese. We're not protesting militaries. We're not protesting leaders, political right, left, Trump, Putin, the little rocky guy, what's his name? President um, of, 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 of Kim Sung un We're not protesting. But what we are saying is one week later, on November the 18th, we don't want to compete with the president's march. One week later, we want to have a walk for peace. We want to walk for the sake of humanity. We want to create a different kind of a attitude in our world so that the laws of nature or God does not recognize we need to go and cause something whereby we die in military conflict. And you know, during World War I, a disease broke out during that on the battlefields because the Spanish flu, and that killed 50 to 100 million of us. Okay, now since Mr. Trump, has, the Pentagon has moved the military parade from July 4th, 2018 to November the 11th, 2018, which is Armistice Day, which is the end of World War I, we have at least 10 good months to organize this in such a way that we have this thing. We can communicate with the whole world, but beginning with Los Angeles, America, around the world, every city around the world, political right, political left, Democrat, Republican, whatever the issue is, we're going to put that aside and hold the truth like those young men did. That's what I'm going to tell you. During World War I, in the very beginning, we were given a gift. In the trenches, German troops, French and, and, and uh, English troops came out of the trenches and they made peace with each other. They called it a Christmas truce. Look it up. It's online. And they shared food and drinks and pictures of their families. And they even played competitive soccer with each other. And it went on for days until the generals realized, hey, we're not having a war anymore. So they rounded up these guys and shot and killed the leaders, the most outspoken ones. We owe it to those young men who, who put their life on the line for peace. It's time we do that. We, we have 10 months to organize. So that's what I'm looking at. And you know, I can't speak for anybody else, but for me, my face is in that direction. And whether on, on that day, November the 11th, one week after the military parade, I'm going to do something in downtown LA. There's no more than 10, 15, 20 of us. We're going to make our statement because you know one more final point I want to make here. Do they have someone have a, like a, um, a, a contact you for the if they want to be part of that? Uh, if you want to be a part of this, um, let me see what uh, email this is, or this Twitter. Is, you know, or... Go to go to my email. Go to ted ted at tedhays us. Ted at tedhays us. And look, as I said before, we all have our political positions: right, left, Democrat, Republican, whatever. This is not about that. This is not about being against the military. This is about humanity. And I believe if we can emit a very good vibration to the universe, to the laws of nature, to God, perhaps it will be a signal to him or it that we mean business. And perhaps the disasters that we all feel and fear to come won't happen. It's about an attitude change, folks. That's all, an attitude change. So, this is in the early stages. We have 10 months to organize this. Uh, and um, it shouldn't be that difficult. It should, and you know, one more thing I want to say. 
We will not have any anti-anything signs. We will not speak vulgarity because it's about children will be there. And we're not going to speak against anybody. We're just going to speak about peace. And peace does not, and war does not begin with people and governments, and militaries. Peace and war begins with you and I. And if we can demonstrate peace with humanity, the war rhetoric will dry up. And we want world leaders to participate. Only one stipulation, we want veterans too, and we want them to wear their veterans hats, but no military uniforms, no military uniforms, and we, because those were dressing to kill. And so, but we, we want presidents, world leaders, generals, anybody, humanity. That's what this is about. Can we do that? And look at you in the camera. Yeah, look at look the camera. Last night I had the strangest dream I ever dreamed before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. I dreamed I saw a mighty room, a room filled with men and women. And the paper that they all had signed said they'd never fight again. And the people in the streets below were dancing round and round. And guns and swords and uniforms were scattered on the ground. Last night I had the strangest dream I ever dreamed before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. That begins with you and me.